Welcome to the ministry of Happy and Jeannie Caldwell. And now, here's Happy Caldwell. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Sunday broadcast. We continue today with the message on the way of faith. You do realize in Acts chapter 9, the Apostle Paul was actually getting legal permission from the government to go out and arrest those people that he said were in that way, the way of faith. You see, all those people had been under the law, and now Messiah has come, Jesus, and people are believing in Jesus. And this now is called the way of faith. It's really the way of faith in the Lord Jesus. So get ready for what I'm about to say. Jesus did not perform miracles just because he was the Son of God. Let me say it again. Jesus did not perform miracles just because he was the Son of God. Jesus performed miracles because he was a man anointed by God. Jesus is the Son of God. But you are a Son of God if you're born again. And the Bible says, you that are justified shall live by faith. You're justified by faith in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says you're supposed to live by faith. You're supposed to live by that way. Get ready for the way of faith on today's broadcast. Before we get into the Word, Jeannie's going to minister to you in song, beautiful song. If you need healing or deliverance, let the Lord touch you while she sings, Glorify Thy Name. This prayer that I raise, may your name be exalted through all of my days. Teach me your love now and show me your ways. There is no other deserving your praise. Glory.
Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Her beautiful Holy voice Spirit, is unforgettable. Thou art welcome in this place. Her inspirational songs are timeless. He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. For years, audiences have cherished the music of Jeannie Caldwell. From I'm a Believer to The Anointing. It's the anointing that really makes a difference. Every song makes you feel in his presence. Best Loved Hits, Hidden Classics, all found on Genie, Colors, and The Peaceable Kingdom, CDs you'll treasure forever. Buy yours today wherever the products of Happy and Genie Caldwell are sold. And now, here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. I woke up, oh, I guess back in the summer. I've said this at several meetings that I've done. I, I said it at the Copeland Conference. and I, I knew when I said it that uh, the ministers that were there were going to anticipate what I was about to say incorrectly. I woke up one morning, and God speaks to me a lot when I wake up first thing in the morning. And all of a sudden, I just had a, an overwhelming uh, just presence of God and an exhilaration and I woke up and I said, I am a wealthy man. Now listen to what, what followed. I am a wealthy man. I have a God who loves me. A Lord and Savior who died for me. A Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of me. A wife that loves me and prayed me into the kingdom. And Kate can't keep her hands out of my hair. <laughs> I know she'd like to say her side of this. <clears throat> I have a son that honors me. I have grandchildren that think I'm wonderful. And I have great-grandchildren they're not too sure who I am yet. <laughs> I'm a wealthy man. You thought I was going to say because I have money and cars and all. No, no. I am a wealthy man because all of these spiritual things that God has given me. God said he'd take care of me. God said he'd supply all my need according to the riches and glory of Christ Jesus. God said if I give, it'll be given unto me. I don't, even have, I don't even have to bother him with that. I don't have to go to him with that. I don't have to cry and beg and squall. What I have to do is learn the way of faith. I have to learn how this faith kingdom is supposed to work. I have to understand the foundation of my Christianity. And then I have to understand how I am supposed to live. Now go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And let's look at verse 19. Jesus told Peter, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, here's how the kingdom of heaven works. Here's how it operates. You bind and you loose. Brother Hagin tells the story of he was talking with God, having one of those visions that he had with God. And all of a sudden, a little demon spirit walked in between God and Brother Hagin and kept interrupting him. And Brother Hagin said, I just waited wondering when the Lord was going to do something about it. And he never did. And he said, so after that demon uh, interrupted it so much, I said, Lord, why don't you do something about this devil? He said, I've already done all I'm going to do about the devil. That's your responsibility. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let's continue with this. Go over to 1 Corinthians and let's go to chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 27. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 27 through 30. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Faith is foolishness to people that think they're wise. Faith is foolishness. Um, to say that you can call things that are not as though they were, that's stupidity, that's foolishness, that's, you're insane. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world. Why? To confound the wise. He's chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Hmm. The mystery of faith is twofold. One, in Colossians 1, 26, 27, it says the mystery of faith has been revealed that has been hidden from us. I mean, hidden for us, not from us. And the mystery of faith is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You ought to get a revelation of this. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Say it out loud. Christ in me, the hope of glory. The Spirit of Christ is in me. I've been doing a study on the man, Jesus. Because I've, I've watched ministers minister so long, and it just occurred to me, you know, how, how did Jesus minister? What kind of man was he? Did he spit and shout and jump and run? And Was he meek and lowly and never raised his voice? And uh, the Holy Spirit began to give me some scriptures to go and look up uh, about Jesus. Uh, the, Bi the Bible says that he was uh, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief in Isaiah. But when it says he was a man of sorrows, it didn't mean he was sorrowful. If you keep reading, it says he took our sorrows. The only reason he was a man of sorrows is because he took your sorrows. I don't, I don't see in the scripture where Jesus was all labored down, burdened down. No. There's another scripture that the disciples said about Jesus. You know, no man ever spake like this man. Another scripture says he spoke with authority. And I was about to conclude that I couldn't find any place in there where he hollered and yelled and screamed and all that until I heard Brother Jesse talking about when he went to heaven. And he said Jesus was hollering and screaming and yelling. He said, man, he was preaching. He said he was spitting and hollering and screaming. And I thought, now I'm going to have to take Jesse's word for that. But it, it could be that Jesus is all of those things. I've just never seen him or heard him holler and yell and spit. And, because I thought, well, he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to get anybody's attention. He doesn't have to impress anybody. <laughs> One day he was preaching and everybody left. And Jesus turned around to the disciples and said, you boys want to go too? Have at it. He didn't need a crowd. Hmm. Okay, let's go over to 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 through 5. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. 
I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. My speech was, and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. Now you hook this on to what he said in chapter 1, verse 27, God chose the foolish things. Here's the Apostle Paul. He said, I didn't come to impress you with my speech or my excellency or my knowledge or anything. He said, I came just to demonstrate the Spirit and power of the Holy Ghost. Those of you that have been here a long time, you know Ed Dufresne was a dear friend of ours. and He ministered here many times. And Ed was a precious man. I loved him dearly. Uh, he and Jerry Savelle and Buddy Harrison and I did meetings together uh, many times uh, uh, around the country and across the world. Well, Ed went to the home to be with the Lord a few years ago. And I began to just reminisce about him. He, he was one of the most anointed men that I've ever known. But he was one of the strangest men. And a lot of people didn't like him. A lot of people couldn't, couldn't uh, handle him. Uh, but Ed was anointed. And I remember times where we were ministering together, maybe one time in Joplin, Missouri, and it was his night to preach. The four of us were doing a meeting, and we all just kind of gathered together in a huddle to pray before each service. The power was so strong, we, we touched Ed, we all four fell on the floor. One time we were staying at their home out in California, and uh, we were all sitting at the breakfast table, me and Jeannie and, and his wife, and all of a sudden, Ed walked in in his bathrobe, walked past, Jeannie walked past the table, and she said, I almost fell out of the chair. The anointing was so strong. But yet when he was in the pulpit, he, he, he only had an eighth grade education. He couldn't even pronounce the words. He called principalities principalities. <laughs> and we'd all laugh at him sitting on the front row. Me and Jerry and Buddy, we'd just bust out laughing. And he'd look at us. He'd say, what did I say? <laughs> and we'd say, principalities. He said, well, I don't care what I said. It was anointed. <laughs> and it was. Now, that's the foolish things of the world. <laughs> and we all qualified. Why did he do that? He, but you, with Ed, you could see plainly the demonstration of the Spirit and power. See, he, he had to depend on the Holy Ghost because he didn't have the education that he needed. But the Holy Ghost... <laughs> I mean, there... there an education is a premium for anybody, but the Holy Ghost doesn't need your education to minister to people. All he needs is your obedience. Hallelujah. All right, let's close with this. Are we expected to operate the same way that God does? Are we expected to do the same things that Jesus did? Can we? Should we? Yes. Oh, where's that in the Bible, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Uh, I tell you, the, the, the older I get in the Lord and the more I understand, and I thought, I thought I had, you know, had some knowledge and revelation, but the longer I'm at this, the more I realize how little I do really know. I'm still learning. And I've heard people say that for years, and I always dismissed it. I thought, oh, well, they're just senile. They're just, you know, getting to the point where they just... But it's true. The more revelation you get, the more revelation you realize you don't have. In Romans chapter 4, let's begin with uh, uh, verse 13. For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of, of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, where there's no law, there's no transgression. Therefore is a faith that it might be by grace to the end, that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Abraham's the father of the Jews, father of the Arabs, and the father of the Christians. He's our, our father in the faith. Now look at this next verse. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations before him who he believed, God, 
who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now, other translations paraphrase this. They say, he's simply saying, I have made Abraham to op operate and act like God. And God calls those things that are not as though they were. Two points about the mystery of faith. One is in Colossians. And it tells us that Christ in us is the mystery of the revelation that he hid for us, not from us. Two, the apostle Paul said also in uh, Galatians 3.20, he said, I was crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but it's not me, but Christ lives in me. So Jesus is in me. Jesus is in you, if you're born again. His spirit, his, the spirit of Christ is on the inside of you, in your spirit. So are we expected to operate the same way as God? Of course we are. We're created in His image and likeness. We're to call things that are not yet seen as though they were. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 gives us additional supplemental scripture. 2 Corinthians 4.13 We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written I believed and therefore have I spoken we also believe and therefore speak. We have the same spirit of faith. We're born of that spirit of faith. The way of faith is the way of the Lord, the way of Christ Jesus. The way we live is by our faith in and of Christ Jesus. Paul went on to say that I live by the faith of Jesus. I don't just have faith in him. I have faith. I have the faith of him. And examples of calling things that are not as though they were. Isaiah 35, verse 4. Let the weak say I'm strong. Joel 3, 10. Let the weak say I'm strong. 2 Corinthians 12, 10. Hebrews eleven six. 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please me. So what did God say? God said, let the weak say I'm strong. Right? If I'm weak, it won't do me any good to say I'm weak. If I'm sick, it doesn't do any good to say I'm sick. Now, now get this, faith does not deny what exists. Faith denies sickness's right to exist. Faith is not denial of what exists. The Bible didn't say to call what is as though it were not. He said to call what is not yet seen. What is not? Healing, health, peace of mind, soundness of mind. I really trust that the Holy Spirit ministered to you concerning the way of faith. I believe it will help you to understand that way. Now I'd like to pray for you. You know, the people in the book of Acts chapter 9 that were slaughtered and hauled into court, so to speak, by the, actually Saul of Tarsus became the Apostle Paul. But as Saul of Tarsus, he breathed out threatenings and slaughter against people that were in that way. Then the Apostle Paul had a strange thing happen to him. On the road to Damascus, Jesus appeared to him and he, Paul, got saved. He got born again most powerful thing that can ever happen to any individual. I want to pray for you. Have you ever been born again? You may go to church. You may have been a member of a church, but that doesn't save you. You must be born again. How do you get born again? The Bible says if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and God raised Him from the dead and you believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth, you'll be saved. Would you pray with me right now? Just close your eyes concentrate on what you're doing and just say, Jesus, 
I believe you're the Son of God. I believe God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Save me now. Take away my sin nature. Give me your righteous nature. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it in your heart, said it with your mouth, I want you to have the book that's on the screen right now. It's called God Loves You. And this little book will help you get started right with the Lord. It's easy to get. Just log on to the website, vtntv.com. You can download it for free. Or you can call 1-800-264-2525. Tell the operator you just prayed with Pastor Caldwell and you like that book and we'll send it to you. We're here to pray and stand in agreement with you. So if you have a prayer request or a praise report, just email it to me, happycaldwell at vtntv.com. You can also call 1-800-264-2525 and send us your prayer request. New product offer today. You know, so many times I hear people say, well, we don't own anything. It all belongs to God. Well, it all originated with God. God produced everything, but He expects us as believers to take ownership of what He gave us. Watch this product offer and I'll be right back. In the beginning, God intended for man to rule and take dominion over his creation. Although Satan usurped that dominion from Adam, Jesus defeated Satan at Calvary and took back ownership for us. Therefore, it's not about taking back what Satan stole from Adam. It's about ownership. In this six CD audio series, Happy Caldwell prepares us to enter into joint ownership privilege with God. Order Ownership for just $30 by calling 1-800-264-2525 or log on to vtntv.com. If you would like to have revelation of your ownership privilege through Christ, then get that product. Listen to it, read it over and over, and let the Holy Spirit give you a revelation on ownership. Also, I encourage you to join me on Twitter. You can follow me at happy underscore Caldwell. Be sure to join Jeannie and me next week, same time, same station. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. You can watch today's show online. Simply log on to vtntv.com. If you'd like to order today's broadcast on DVD, you may call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. To contact this ministry, you may write to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call us at 501-223-2525. And be sure to visit us online at vtntv.com.